Friends, this one is arguably the most important law you can master. Perhaps you're struggling to get respect, status and recognition. Perhaps you want to know how some people have this certain aura around them, no matter where they go, stand or sit, when they open their mouths, people listen. If you watch this video to the end, I promise you, you will go far in becoming an enigmatic figure yourself. Now, how can you exactly acquire all those sought after qualities in one video? Defiance of the law. In 1825, a new Tsar, Nicholas I, ascended the throne of Russia. A rebellion immediately broke out. But why? The rebellion was led by liberals demanding that the country modernize so that its industries and civil structures catch up with the rest of Europe. In order to crush this rebellion, known as the Decemberist Uprising, Nicholas sent as one of his leaders, Ryolyev, to death. On the day of execution, Ryolyev stood on the gallows with the noose around his neck. The final moment of his life had come. And finally, after the painful wait, the trapdoor opened and Ryolyev was left dangling. Feeling the oxygen get scarcer by the second and as he was about to lose consciousness, a miracle happened. The rope around his neck broke. At the time, events like this were considered signs of providence or heavenly will and a man saved from execution this way was usually pardoned. As Ryolyev got to his feet, bruised and dirty, but believing his neck had been saved, he called out to the crowd. You see, in Russia, they do not know how to do anything properly. Not even how to make rope. A messenger immediately went to the Winter Palace with the news of the filled hanging. Annoyed by this disappointing filled execution, Nicholas nevertheless began to sign the pardon. But then he asked, did Ryolyev say anything after his miracle? The messenger replied, he said that in Russia they do not know even how to make rope. In that case, let us prove the contrary. And he tore up the pardon. The next day, Ryolyev was hanged again. This time, the rope did not break. Learn the first lesson. A person who cannot control his words shows that he cannot control himself and is unworthy of respect. The momentary satisfaction you gain with your biting words will be outweighed by the price you pay. Laws of power, law four. Say less than necessary. When you're trying to impress people with words, the more you say, the more common you appear and the less in control. Even if you're saying something banal, it will seem original if you make it vague, open-ended and sphinx-like. Powerful people impress and intimidate by saying less. The more you say, the more likely you are to say something foolish. But before you fully zip up your mouth, there are some caveats with this law. Stick around to the end so you don't commit the sins that deduce your power and make you seem insecure. Friends, just like with anything else in life, short-term gratification doesn't trump long-term gratification. Listen closely. When you want true power, it is necessary, mandatory, even crucial for you to recognize and respect the rule of time. Opt in for playing the long game and you won't make foolish mistakes and won't live your life with regret. Observance in Suits If you've seen the Power intro video, you will enjoy this clip even more. Louis Litt got into a fight with his ex-girlfriend's new fiancé. After a lot of taunting and trash talking and a petty pissing contest to prove who's the better lawyer and use that as a way of showing who's the better man worthy of the woman, their fight has finally come to an end. Louis got him beat. See what happens next. If you're nice, I might let you avoid being humiliated in court. You're the one who's going to be humiliated. If you go to court, that's what everyone's going to see. What do you want? 30 million. And I want it written in the settlement that Lewis Lid is the superior lawyer to Xander Epstein. No way. Yeah, way. You're really that petty. You can bury it in the fine print if you want. 
You can put it in Latin if you want, but it's going in there, and you're always gonna know it's there. If that's what it takes to make you whole, then we have a deal. But one thing, when I get home tonight, remember who's waiting for me. She's gonna cook me dinner, she's gonna rub my feet, she's gonna tell me she loves I me, love and we are never gonna think of you again. Well, maybe on our 50th wedding anniversary, we'll laugh about the guy she almost ended up with. If we can even remember your name. Now it's 50 million. And that's take it or leave it. Exactly. The human tongue is a beast that few can master. It strains constantly to break out of its cage and if it's not tamed, it will run wild and cause you grief. Power cannot accrue those who squander the treasure of words. The price went from 30 million to 50 million just by him trying to get back at him in the spur of a moment. Again, the momentary satisfaction you gain with your biting words will be outweighed by the price you pay. Here is another example. Mike Ross got a new job as an investment banker and needs money to fund his takeover battle against Harvey, his former boss. You're kidding me. So this is all mine? Yep. What about the Southampton City Council? What about them? They're a bunch of public access loving assholes. Like I said, what about them? You want something from them? Just your consideration. Well, you burned it. Go ahead. Not interested. You didn't even look at it. Oh, I don't have to. You just said that I earned your consideration. Mm -hmm. And you just got it. Gillis Industries is ripe for a turnaround, and I already own 7%. Now go beg someone else for money, because you're not getting mine. I don't understand. You don't have to. Now get the hell out of my office. Mr. Giannopoulos. I said get the hell out. It was you. What did you say to Giannopoulos? Not much, just that you were the person responsible for his number two leading him. I was responsible? He agreed to it. Well, what he didn't know was, was that it was his own lawyer who came up with the idea. Now he does. He may have agreed to it, but it was a betrayal by you. And here's a little something you obviously do not know about investment banking. The only thing more satisfying to these guys than money is sticking it to someone who stuck it to them. In the first scene, you detect a perfect application of the law by Tony Giannopoulos. Did you see the aura of power surrounding him? Observe his body language, vocal tonality and the full-on locked death stare when he said Now get the hell out of my office. Mr. Giannopoulos. I said get the hell out. Friends, get it through your head. Powerful people impress and intimidate by saying less. The more you say, the more likely you are to say something foolish. Right after that scene, the law is defied by Lewis. For God's sake, he had won the battle. He blocked Mike from getting funding and blew him out of the water. Yet, it wasn't satisfactory to him. He wanted to get back at Mike for something else. He started flaunting his superior knowledge and explaining that investment bankers want to stick it to each other. Click! Mike got an idea and was therefore right back in the game. Yet again we observed a Pyrrhic victory. So what is it that you can learn from these scenes regarding power? Keys to power. Power is in many ways a game of appearances and when you say less than necessary you inevitably appear greater and more powerful than you are. Your silence will make other people uncomfortable. Why is this? Humans are machines of interpretation and explanation. They have to know what you're thinking and when you carefully control what you reveal, they cannot pierce for your intention or your meaning. Your short answers and silences will put them on the defense and they will jump in nervously filling the silence with all kinds of comments that will reveal valuable information about them and their weaknesses. They will leave a meeting with you feeling as if they had been robbed and they will go home and ponder your every word. This extra attention to your brief comments will only add to your power. In most areas of your life, the less you say, the more profound and mysterious you appear. And as you just saw, by saying less than necessary, 
you create the appearance of meaning and power. Also, the less you say, the less risk you run of saying something foolish, even dangerous. Cultivate a mysterious and sphinx-like aura and power is bound to accompany you. In the court of Louis XIV, nobles and ministers would spend days and nights debating issues of the state. Then, two representatives would explain the situation to the king. But they were never sure how and were deadly afraid of approaching him with the wrong way at the wrong time. When the fateful moment finally arrived, the two men approached Louis, explaining the issue at hand and spelling out the options in detail. Louis would listen in silence, a most enigmatic look on his face. Finally, when each had finished his presentation and had asked for the king's opinion, he would look at them both and say the infamous line, I shall see. Then he would walk away. The ministers and courtiers never heard another word on this subject from the king. They would simply see the result weeks later when he would come to a decision and act. Interpretation Louis XIV was a man of very few words. Louis wasn't always this way. As a young man, he was known for talking at length, delighting in his own eloquence. Later, he adopted this mask so no one below him knew exactly where he stood or could predict his reactions. No one could try to deceive him by saying what they thought he wanted to hear because no one knew what he wanted to hear. The more they talked, the more they revealed about themselves. Information he would later use against them to great effect. In the end, Louis' silence kept those around him terrified and under his thumb. It was one of the foundations of his power. Friends, before we move on to the reversal of the law, I want to thank every single one of you for the incredible growth from the past week. Doubling the subscriber count, which seems like nothing, but it is a catalyst for enormous growth that awaits this channel. It takes a lot of time to make these videos, so your sub, like and comment really helped a lot. And next to my study, I try to make these videos consistently for you. I also want to thank the subreddit dedicated to the 48 Laws of Power for the support and positive feedback. Especially the moderator Sean, who has been helping spreading the message. My gratitude is enormous. Friends, I also got your messages to make body language breakdown videos on famous movie characters, plus sharing my insanely productive morning routine. So stay tuned for that as well. Thank you. Reversal of the law. At which times is it unwise to be silent and why? Silence and saying less than necessary must be practiced with caution and in the right situations. Silence can arouse suspicion and even insecurity, especially in your superiors. Also, words can sometimes act as a kind of smokescreen for any kind of deception you might practice. The verbose are not perceived as sly and manipulative but as helpless and unsophisticated. This is the reverse of the silent policy employed by the powerful. By talking more and making yourself appear weaker and less intelligent than your mark, you can practice deception with greater ease. Friends, to recap the top three lessons of this law. In most areas of life, the less you say, the more profound and mysterious you appear. The less you say, the less risk you have of saying something foolish. And by saying less than necessary, you create this appearance of meaning and power. <laughs>